Hello viewers, and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. Last time, we fought a horrible beast from the Stygian Depths, in some kind of crazy outer space disco void. Today, we're gonna fight a different kind of beast. A, a man-made beast. Cause that's what the, the 8 pounder, it's a, it's a cannon. Spoilers. Spoilers for a thing you're gonna see in a couple of minutes. Alright, so what I know about this fight is going to shape the construction of our party a little bit. We want to have pretty good burst damage. I think we're looking at a party maybe of... Uh, I so wish that I could bring Fitzalan and Parthenai in the same party. Well, we're going to bring Dismas, I think. Here, let's let's actually build the party here. So we're gonna bring Dismas. We can bring Durandal. We'll fix his skills a little bit. Parth and I and Mantel. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good party. Alright. Well, that being the case, these two need to have their gear touched up a bit. And Durandal needs to get his skills optimized. I know, Trelly. Just relax, man. Okay, we... Sure, let's let's go ahead and decrease the cost of trading. paramount if one is to master the brutal arithmetic of combat. And it is brutal arithmetic. Alright. We're gonna unlock these two skills. And we're gonna go ahead and just level all of his skills up to... Oh, that's right! We can actually level things up even more now. Well, in that case, maybe it behooves us to figure out what we're actually taking. Uh, we'll definitely take Blackjack. Blackjack is an extremely powerful skill. We're going to take Target Whistle. So he's going to be the one who's doing the marking for our bounty hunter. Durandal's going to spend a fair amount of time in the front rank on this one, so there's going to be a lot of turns where he can't use Hound's Rush. So his loadout's going to be Blackjack for sure, Target Whistle for sure, probably Hound's Harry, since it's the only attack that he has access to in the front row. And uh, ranking Hound's Harry up here will add a point of damage to its bleed. I think that's definitely worth doing. And what should his fourth skill be? Should he even have Hound's Rush if he's going to be in front a lot? Probably not. He also can't use Lick Wounds from the front. I think we're going to bring Guard Dog, but we're not going to bother leveling it up, because I don't want to pay 675 gold for two dodge when we still have other people's skills to deal with. <clears throat> in fact, let's, uh, let's upgrade armor and weapons. That's definitely worth doing. This will add one damage to our attacks. And we don't have the deeds necessary to upgrade this anymore. I'm going to let that slide for the moment. You also are getting dodge and health. Ah, the dodge base for Vestals is zero. Look at that. Look how much more attractively colored it is now. <clears throat> Her base actually... Our mace upgrades actually are a little bit better. We're going to save the money. Back to the guild. Parthenai, you have the skills I want you to have, but let's upgrade them. We're going to upgrade her heals, because I think we're going to need them. We'll definitely put one level of upgrade into the stun. Uh, why not? Let's just get her up all the way. Okay, Dismas, your skills could use a little bit of love. 5% accuracy gain. Hmm, will we be taking tracking shot? Probably. Point blank shot won't be too useful on the brigand, the 8 pounder fight. It is a long fight, it's a real endurance battle. Uh, the reason I want burst damage is that the cannon brings in. 
uh, reinforcements every turn, and you really want to hack those reinforcements down quickly. Uh, but we are going to upgrade these two skills at the very least. And what the hell, open vein as well. It adds a point of damage to the bleed. That could be pretty significant. I don't know why I closed the guild. I do want to keep it open. Uh, it's interesting that upgrading the rank of this skill doesn't change the amount of damage it deals to, uh, against marked targets. I had assumed that that would be the case. I'm still going to take it. Uh, yep, an extra point of damage on the bleed. A little bit of extra stuff. We're really cutting it close on gold here. Well, we're committed now. Upgrading heroes really is uh, one of the primary expenses. This is, you're going to spend far more gold on that than almost anything else. Alright, I think I'm pretty happy with this party. Nobody has any skills that need to get changed right now, do they? Oh, your skills definitely need to get changed. We're going to take off Lick Wounds and put on this. Okay. Let's go for it. As long as the thieves and ruffians man a cannon on the old road, the hamlet will be cut off from trade. Demolish this ironwork devil. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll we'll demolish that ironwork devil. <clears throat> We're gonna go like all the way down to nothing gold here, provisioning. Do I need to bring anything else? Look how little gold we have. Oh, I cut it way down to the wire here. Alright, let's just go all the way down to the wire, huh? Simple folk are by their nature loquacious. And the denizens of the hamlet were no exception. It was not long before rumors of my morbid genius and secretive excavations began to fuel local legend. In the face of my increasingly egregious flaunting of public taboos, awe turned to ire, and demonstrations were held in the town square. Pisses off the, the townspeople. And gunpowder hangs in the air. The war machine is close. Hmm, this is a little, uh, this is a little ugly. This room, this room, and this room are all equal distance from our starting point, which means we don't really know where the 8-pounder is. Well, we'll go to here first and see if we can get scouting information. I gotta say, our ancestor was a bit of a shit. Alright, good dodge. He's pissing off old gods, he's pissing off fishmen, he's pissing off the common townspeople. Alright, well, we're gonna go this way in the hopes of getting a lucky scout that reveals more information about this branch, and also because there's a blockage this way and I see no reason to engage with it. We'd simply walk around. I'm really nervous about running out of uh, shovels ever since we had that one really bad experience here. Oh, I have the anti venom, I totally. Well, let's just use it now. How about that? It's as though I used it on the tree. Except that we didn't get any loot. Okay. If we kill the de stressors, that'll leave room for these guys to start to create more enemies. Uh, and with that in mind, we're still totally going to do it because I hate these guys. 119% chance to stun. Almost guaranteed to hit, or guaranteed to work if it hits. Continually onslaught. I forgot about the point blank shot. Alright, let's, uh... Hmm. Yeah, let's drop a stun onto her. And then we're going to do a Hound's, uh, 
A hound's hairy. A singular strike. So get some bleed damage. So they'll start to bleed when they try to take their turns, and this will soften them up a little bit for the kill blow next turn. Alright. So she has... They both have two on them. So this, if it hits, is guaranteed to do lethal damage. Give them no quarter. Sadly, not able to avoid stressful incantations altogether. Uh, we're significantly more likely to get the kill here, and we still have two damage dealers. I think we can get this kill with our Vestal and still kill the... Uh, oh! Oh, actually, that'll work fine. He's got a bleed on him. Never mind, I was a little upset for a moment there, but we're... Alright, they're both dead. Grand. You... I have nothing exciting to do, so I'll finish him off. Wow, good start. Who has... You have some bad negative traits. You get to do it. Pour the holy water on the altar. Alright, Plutomania, yes. That was the one that was locked in too, right? Oh, that's beautiful. What a wonderful outcome that was. All right, we're going to push this way. Sure, free food. Lots of free food. I like that. Let's be at full light for this battle. All right, not too bad. Oh, I forgot to swap our guy back into position here. Come on, bleed. Yes. It's like he did the the point blank shot. Wow, too fast, these guys. Their formation is broken. But it looks like it's not going to help them at all. Alright. Since he already took his turn, he's done for next turn. We can afford to patch up a little bit here. No danger of taking an additional attack. I mean, I guess, unless all four of us miss horribly. Which isn't actually impossible. Could totally have happened. Alright, any scouting? No scouting. We'd really like to get a scout when we get here. Alright, two web spiders. These aren't even the dangerous spiders. The game is definitely being very gentle with us so far. Hey look, I remembered. But a victory nonetheless. Alright, we're gonna walk in here with no light just in case we do get the scout. Because if the Brigand Day Pounder is nearby, I would like to go to camp, you know. Alright, let's see if we can get a nice big hit. That's not too bad. Obviously, we're going to light into these two the hardest, though. Masterfully executed. That was masterfully executed. Hmm. Alright, we're going to leave him for the Hound Master. I think the Hound Master is going to be able to get the killing blow. So let's see what we can do about this guy. Oh, straight up murder him. And if the bleed sticks, all right. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. That was a really, really excellent first turn. And we'll get this guy down before he gets another turn, no question. Yep, there it is. So we'll just do this to burn some time. Hopefully the Vestal, yes, good. Vestal gets a turn, so we get a free heal. And now you get to bleed to death. That is a lot of loot. Including a nice replacement for the uh, anti-venom that we wasted earlier. Uh, what do we not need?
Well, we can't really eat ten food right now, and, and I'd rather have the stack of ten food than probably the two keys. Alright, great. Scouting information. No. No enemy. I guess he's here. Right, we're going to go up this branch. Uh, we'll get a little bit of de-stressing from the trap disarm there. And we'll get to take advantage of whatever that curio is. We keep the light low until we get our loot on. Any luck? Nope. Well, <laughs> let's just do that again. It worked out so well last time we did it. I really wish there wasn't a fight here. We'll have to make a decision about what kind of light level we want to have. We'll use a couple of torches right in front of it. Uh, and then we'll go through this hallway without using any more. We'll camp in this spot, apply our various camping buffs, whatever we have available. Although, to be perfectly honest, I don't know for sure that it's anything. I mean, probably somebody has some buff skills, right? Alright, let's, uh, let's do a torch or two right now. We don't actually want to walk the hallway in darkness. Because in total darkness, there are some bad things that can occur. Right. Remember to use our anti-venom. Hmm. Well, those are neat. Okay, easy fight. That's nice. Uh, let's obliterate one of these things. at least promises success. Right. Lucky Scout? Yeah, Lucky Scout. Okay, so we know there's not another battle. We don't have medicinal herbs. Here, you. Just touch it. Okay. Dismiss gets to disarm the trap and go even lower stress, down to 10. Uh, right, we're just going to go into the room in the total dark. Alright, and camp. Maximum efficiency on the firewood. Gathered close in tenuous firelight, an uneasy companionship. We didn't really need to do that, but there's no reason not to spend all that food. Alright, so clean your guns. That's exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about when I say buffs. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I don't think it is size 2. I don't remember. I'm, trying to think. I'm pretty sure that it can have three guys with it, so it must only be size 1. Uh, we don't really have even a lot to do. Man, this has just been such an easy dungeon. And I know I'm asking for trouble by saying things like that, but... I guess we'll do a pep talk on... Dismas? He's gonna do a lot of damage. It'd be good for him to, to stay on the team. Not freak out on us. And then we'll, uh, something that costs two. Sure, Bandit Sense. And I guess we'll just use her Sanctuary skill. Reduce the chance of a nighttime ambush, because we have literally nothing else of value to do with our five time units. But this is, uh, you know, this is something. It would be annoying to get ambushed here. Yeah, it's going real smoothly. We'll see if that continues to be the case when we fight the boss. Star is born. Free loot? Free loot! Yay! Okay. There's a little bit of an endurance fight. The, the cannon has a lot of health and a lot of prod.
Yeah, okay. I remembered correctly, it is not size 2. So, the gimmick here... ...is that this dude is going to light the cannon if we let him survive. And if the cannon gets lit, then next turn it will explode, you know, it'll shoot a cannonball out at us and do a crazy amount of damage to everybody on the team. So our goal is to never let him do that. But for right now, we're going to accomplish that with a stun. You can see he has negative 20 speed. He always goes last, just to ensure that you always have a fair chance of getting a stun or a kill onto him. No, oh, her kill, her stun skill doesn't hit the back rank. That's unfortunate. But that works. And we'll finish this guy off. All right. So here we go. Every turn, the cannon's gonna call for some reinforcements. If it doesn't get to fire. Uh, it looks like the reinforcement call didn't work. Maybe because there's already a matchman? Hmm. Alright, well I don't know why that went the way it did, but I'm happy enough. Uh, I was really hoping the Houndmaster would get to go first and throw the mark onto it, since his mark reduces prot. Uh, so you can see it's resistant to everything. You can't poison or you can't poison it. You can't make it bleed. You can't move it around. You can't stun it. You just kind of got to wail away at the thing a couple points of damage at a time. Although sometimes you get big crits and they're wonderful. All right, so minus 25% prot and it'll be marked. It resisted the prot debuff. Right, because then it's 200% debuff resist. Oh, well. We'll still do extra damage to it on account of it being marked. And when I say we, I mean just the bounty hunter. There we go. So every turn it's going to summon two or three guys. And it's our job, first of all, to make sure that the matchman dies. And then just to control the situation. Don't let things get out of hand. This fight is all about executing control over a long period of time. So, Pistol Shot would do 2 to 3 damage. This will do 1 to 2 damage, but also do some meaningful damage to him. Yeah, let's do that then. Oh, wow. Uh... Yeah, let's just do this. This will put this guy in a state where... Our Houndmaster will be able to do his AoE bleed and kill it while also getting damage onto the matchman. Like so. Alright, that was lethal, right? Yeah. So the matchman has two points of bleed on him. This only has to hit for four for it to be lethal. Wow. Okay, pretty good. And now we need to hammer on the cannon a little bit. Mark is worn off. That's an annoying. That's a very annoying enemy for him to have summoned. Well, let's put the mass run away first. We'll stun this guy. We don't need to replace the mark right away. As you've already seen, we're gonna expend some number, a number of turns that are it's hard to predict, just subduing henchmen. Want to always make sure. Things are going pretty smoothly, though. Oh, wow, that was lucky. Alright, so we'll get rid of him, and then we can focus on this thing for the remainder of the turn. Get the mark back on it for future turns. Yeah, this thing is, uh, it is doomed now. 
Well, he just has no meaningful damage to deal. Honestly, we're just gonna refresh the duration of the mark. And everybody give it what for. Ooh, wow. Uh, let's abandon our control strategy and just get rid of this thing. It's gotten so low we're getting the bloodlust. I don't actually know what the matchman does if there's no cannon. Okay, that's really not a big deal. <laughs> Let's go ahead and drop him. Alright. Wow. Be wary. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. Okay. Uh I don't need this dog treat. I really probably should have used it during combat. But that'll give us a slot for this thing. And then these we can just equip on people as a way of carrying them out of the dungeon. So, plus 20% move skill chance, plus 10% max HP. Great. And we can break into the food supply for this. Yeah, continue adventuring, though. Right, we can go loot some more curios. We're in extremely high spirits. Uh, let's do this, though. Yeah, let's go back and get some more loot. I see no reason not to. So, the Brigand 8-pounder fight... I did make that look a little bit easier than it probably will be for a first-timer, because the first time you do it, if you haven't watched any YouTube videos, you are going to get caught off guard, you are going to get shot by the cannon, and it's going to do uh, a huge amount of AoE damage. But I did kill the thing the first time I encountered it, too. I just had to, you know, adjust to the fact that we'd been hit by a cannonball. And then, uh recover. So now that we know that we're not really going to have any more use for our shovels, I feel comfortable going this way and expending one. Uh, I don't really want to take the bandage. There are curios. Uh, there are curios here in this area. victim to the spreading corruption. Malformed. Uh, there are heroes here in this area that benefit from the use of a bandage, but I just don't, uh... I don't care enough to drop treasure for it, certainly. Well struck. Normally I'm really excited about this, the stress relief of a crit, but here it's kind of irrelevant. We're in fantastic shape. Uh, you... drop a stun. And you know what? Why don't you see if you can get a stun as well? In radiance, may we find victory. Unfortunately, they're probably going to get to go before our whole party. Yep, on the subsequent turn, so they will get attacks off. Ah, not both of them. I don't know what this does. Push on to the task's end. Man, we are way past the task's end. You gotta pay attention, Wayne. I don't know what this does without holy water. My guess is it either gives you a negative quirk or gives you a bunch of stress, and I'm not interested in either of those things. So let's walk forward, check out what's in this bag. And then just kinda back out slowly. And we'll head this way. I don't wanna, there's no reason to fight here. And then the path back to the other curios would be really awkward from that side. Oh, that could be more useful. Uh, you know, I often don't do these, but we totally have extra shovels. Excellent. Four deeds. That's definitely useful. 
Alright, we have no more torches, so... I'll have to see how I feel about engaging in combat here. Great, okay. Uh, we certainly... We don't need that shovel as much as we need room for another stack of gold. Uh, sure. Yeah, we got lots of food. This place is starting to sound real sinister. Uh, see if you can get through the lock. Nope, the lock was trapped. Alright. It's gonna be pitch black by the time we get over there and open that door. Do I want to have a fight in the pitch black? We've got a pretty good haul already. It really might be pushing it. But obviously I've already made my mind up because I'm eating the food to gear us up for the fight. So here we go! Oh, wait. Darkness closes in, okay. Haunting the hearts of men. Let's see what we got. Okay, we might take some damage here, but honestly, it's not too likely that we'll take a lot of stress. Uh, let's stun one of these things. The monsters are more accurate and they deal more damage in the dark, but the offset for that is that your crit chance goes up significantly. Yeah. And crit chance going up significantly actually does mean that you, um... You will end battles a lot less stressed than you otherwise might, because crits are great for stress relief. She's very unlikely to get the kill, so let's go for the stun instead. There we go. That'll prevent his action. That attack, uh, her, her stun gives us a little bit of torchlight. Excellent. I hate, 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 hate these little things. Alright, total control of the battle. Never let the opponents do anything ever. It's a three point bleed. Alright, he has a lethal bleed, but there's no reason to delay. Foolish horrors. Okay. And driven into the mud. We certainly don't need food. Alright, what an incredibly successful expedition. So, great trinket. Uh, really a lot of money. Yeah, well over 10,000 gold. We brought home a lot of heirlooms. A lot of valuable heirlooms, too. Like, deeds are in really high demand. And, of course, you can never have enough crests. Everything needs crests. And nobody has to be de-stressed. In fact, our party as a whole has a total of 10 stress. Fantastic. A Blutomania. Uh, we might get that stripped. I don't remember exactly what that forced him to interact with, but I just really hate those. Uh, that'll get cured. We'll take that off. Okay, that's fine. And that's irrelevant on her. You can build a Vestal to use a little bit of melee. Their mace attack actually isn't bad. And from the front ranks, uh, from the second row, they still can use the party heal. Can you feel it? The walls between the sane world and that unplumbed dimension of delirium are tenuously thin here. Okay, so we ended up in an okay place. That's not a lot of gold. Uh, obviously, we spent a lot of gold before that mission, but very little of it was on stuff for the mission. A lot of it was on skill and armor upgrades, which will continue to be useful for the rest of the game, presuming, of course, that our heroes don't die horribly. But let's go ahead and remove his spotted fever. That's a bummer. And then was it Dismas who came down with uh, a Blutomania? It sure was. Came down with it like it's a communicable disease. Yep. You can see as heroes level up, the cost to uh, affect them gets higher and higher. 
over time. We'll uh, do that. And I think we should be able to finish upgrading our roster now. Indeed. Alright, sort by class. Do we have a leper anymore? No, I didn't think so. Right, well, we're, we're recruiting everybody. This man understands that adversity and existence are one and the same. I would really like to have a high-level leper. Uh, I'm sure I've said this before. Lepers do really great damage. Offset by, you can see, the base accuracy on these attacks is 65%. Uh, but a base damage of 7 to 14. That's not great, but not so bad. And that is completely worthless. Um, but if you can level them up, you can get some points into their skills to offset this accuracy penalty, give them a couple of trinkets that increase their accuracy, and that high base damage turns into a real asset. So I'm not at all upset to see a couple of those guys. Uh, can we upgrade our guild? No, not our guild. Our smithy was what I meant, but I'm sure that 11 is insufficient. Yeah, we need a lot more deeds still. But we managed to finish upgrading our roster, and uh, we filled it up again immediately. Is this level sorted? It is level sorted. So we have two heroes at level 3. The next time we go to f confront a boss, I'm sure we'll have a couple more people level up to 3, and then we can start doing the really interesting missions. Uh, it's not just a straight numbers tweak. Once you get up into the next tier, you start to see new types of enemies, old types of enemies gain new abilities, or their abilities gain some new properties. Uh, the step up in difficulty is both uh, terrifying and pretty interesting. It really, you really have to think a lot more to get through battles safely. Also, the loot gets better. Look at that. Start dropping blues. Hmm, that's interesting. I actually don't think that's very good. It's a lot of stun resist, I guess. Uh, but anyway, I think we're going to call this episode here for today. So join us. Drifter's Buckle. Hmm, I've never seen that before either. There's a whole bunch of new items. I haven't really played the game very much in a couple of patches. Because I was waiting for it to be mostly finished. So join us next time on Darkest Dungeon when we continue liberating the countryside from the, gasp, the grasp of these Stygian fiends. Wayne wouldn't have screwed up that line reading. He's, you know, he's good at his job.